Old Time Radio USA continues its annual Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day programming. Stay tuned for more radio programming from December 7, 1941. From the NBC Newsroom in New York, President Roosevelt said in a statement today that the Japanese have attacked the Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, from the air. I'll repeat that. President Roosevelt says that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii from the air. This bulletin came to you from the NBC Newsroom in New York, which for two years has been at war with Adolf Hitler. To the battlefronts of the world, this neighbor at war has sent men, food, airplanes, guns, and ships. We interrupt this program to bring you a special broadcast. Here's the bulletin. Washington, the president decided today after Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor and Manila to call an extraordinary meeting of the cabinet for 8.30 p.m. tonight and to have congressional leaders of both parties join the conference at 9 p.m. And now we take you to Honolulu. Nobody here supposes there will be any hitch or delay in British action. 
The men in the street presume that measures have already been coordinated between the British and American Navy chiefs for the defense of the Pacific. And although the Admiralty is keeping mum, most people believe that the British Navy has already decided what part it will play in this new action in the Pacific. We return you now to New York. We take you now to San Francisco. Japanese 
completely lost pace and descended to the status of being willing to engage in a violent brawl as a result of this answer, although it might be that this answer and Secretary Howe might be tame at the same time. But uh, it sounds like one of those Japanese arguments that suddenly descends into violence. We cannot be sure yet that the Tokyo government is behind it. As to the president's address to the Mikado Saturday news, which we just learned about in its office in Washington, certainly it was a very sweet and a very humble message. And it reminded Japan of the way in which America stood by Japan a hundred years ago when Japan was coming out of medievalism and becoming a modern power. And if America had not mothered Japan at that time, Japan would have been destroyed by the empire-building nations of Europe who were attacking Japan at that time. Uh, today we are mothering China in the course of her changeover from medievalism to modernism. This message, if it reaches the Japanese people, will have a very interesting and valuable influence in Japan. Thank you for now. From San Francisco, we have presented NBC's expert on the Far East up and close. The National Broadcasting Company takes you now to Honolulu. out of something that just doesn't make sense. And yet, if we look at it perhaps from the standpoint of old oriental uh, hands that have been working with this sort of thing for a long time, we can begin to see some things that might make sense. As I've said before, if the attack on Honolulu is not a sufficient force to really cripple that great naval base, but merely sufficient to anger the Americans and make them decide to destroy Japan, then it doesn't make sense from the standpoint of Japan. Unless it's going to be used by some faction in Japan to try to kick the fanatic army and navy crowd out of power in Japan and reverse Japan's policy and bring her over to the Anglo-Saxon side and take her away from the German side. Now, of course, uh, we, we might suspect that the Chinese would have engineered a policy like this to get uh, war on between China and Japan if they had anything to engineer it with, but they haven't. That's out. As I've said before, it might be the Germans... We have to look for that angle. There have been German raiders in the Pacific the last few weeks. There have been several vessels sunk by German ships, apparently. It might be uh, uh, one of the factions in Japan itself. Uh, so far, uh, as, as all we can learn from Honolulu is that the actual bombing has stopped, although the air at the U seems to be still out. But we've been on the telephone to Honolulu, and uh, they say that uh, the actual shooting seems to have stopped for now. Uh, we can't uh, get any word about much damage except some explosions of great magnitude, some fuel tanks that have been blown up. There's one report that two ships were sunk in the harbor, and there's this report about parachute troops seeing the land and uh, wandering about the beach somewhere. Uh, we'll learn a lot more when uh, maybe some aviators are shot down uh, who are still able to talk, or some parachute groups gathered in, and we can ask our men can ask some questions. Uh, we have as yet... Here comes a bulletin... The War Department has invoked the Espionage Act against the publication of military information regarded as secret. We all know that, and uh, we can't any longer state anything about Army strength outside the continental limits of the United States. As to uh, the uh, watch over the Japanese community, it's interesting that we learn that on a, the Atlantic coast in New York and in Norfolk, special watch, police watch has been put over the Japanese. There are very few Japanese there to watch. Here on the Pacific coast, where there are more Japanese than anywhere else, and so far we have no word whatever of anything untoward having happened. I think we can take the word of the local San Francisco Consulate General that the Japanese community has been totally surprised by this action. And so far, there is no uh, indication here whatsoever that any sabotage has broken out or that any Japanese spies or saboteurs were warned in time to go into action. 
Of course, uh, the people around Little Tokyo and Los Angeles are on the TV. So far, I think they've conducted themselves very well. As far as we can learn by the dispatches, that the sheriff has sort of taken charge there, Little Tokyo, and has gone, uh, gathered up a number of volunteers, and they have set up a volunteer uh, watching post, and they're watching the Japanese, but they haven't had any reason to do anything. And people on both sides of the fence there are remaining calm and decent, which is certainly good news. Uh, we are waiting for confirmation about the reports of sinking of the ship in the Pacific. Now, as I say, that could be too be done by Germans, perhaps, as well as by Japanese. We you have to see what happened. Of course, the general uh, comment here on the street is that if the Japanese really did this a purpose, uh, they uh, are pretty foolish. And yet, they, if they did it on purpose, they have certainly got guts. Uh, that's the way the American people on this coast are taking it. We'll wait to see what happens now, and particularly watch for a declaration from Mr. Nomura in Washington. Thank you. Oh, I have to go on a little while longer. I'm sorry, I got the signals wrong. All right, there's plenty of material here in front of us. Uh, police department poured reserves into the district it's in uh, uh, Los Angeles, a little Tokyo. But as I have told you, there are no disorders reported from there yet. <laughs> if this is a purposeful attack on the part of the Japanese, intended by the government, we're in for an exceedingly bitter war in the Pacific. A war in which all the bitterness of racial hostility will come out. Because the average American is dense to the very marrow, having been attacked this way, unawares, when uh, his, his own government was talking in the friendliest fashion with the emissaries of the Tokyo government. But as I say, I wouldn't accept that, too, too. It's very possible that this is something engineered over the head of the Tokyo government, and we'll be hearing from the Tokyo government before very long. It is, most, uh, it is to be noted that there has been no declaration of war from Tokyo or from our side. And, of course, we can't issue a declaration of war until Congress assembles. But still, uh, there's been no statement as yet that a declaration will be asked for. Uh, the deal of speculation is going on as to what we'll do with Mr. Caruso and Mr. Nomura. Well, of course, we want to hear from them first. And if uh, Japan has used them as a blind uh, to cover while she started shooting us, uh, there'll be a lot of feeling that we ought to put them in jail. On the other hand, we have our ambassador and his helpers in Tokyo, and we have to get them out, and they'll have to be in exchange on a hostage basis. But I'm not at all sure, but the Mr. Nomura and Caruso were not as surprised as the local San Francisco Consul General by what has happened this morning. Thank you, and more later. From San Francisco, we brought you NBC's News Hour. Damage was done to planes and to Hickam Field. Their 
there is great activity there now in clearing the field uh, of debris. At Pearl Harbor, for a space, the Pacific Fleet, three ships were attacked. The Oklahoma was set afire. All lines of communication seem to be down between the various Army posts and Navy air drones and Army air fields. There has been no statement made by the Navy. The Army has issued orders for all people, the civilian population, to remain off the streets. The first raiders carried torpedoes and did their damage to shipping in Pearl Harbor and off Honolulu. Everyone here on the islands were taken by surprise by the attack, and even yet it's difficult for some people to believe that our air raid on these beautiful islands has actually happened and that lives have been lost. Uh, several planes have been shot down, and anti-aircraft gunnery is very heavy. It is uh, thought that the plane came from the south in the direction of the island of Kauai. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, Hickam Field and Wheeler Field, several squadrons of Japanese planes, planes came in from the south over Diamond Head, dropping bombs and incendiary bombs over the city. One dra- bomb dropped in front of the governor's mansion at Washington Place and killed one man. Another dropped by the Honolulu advertiser, nearly hitting several people and almost uh, reaching its mark. At the Pacific Heights and Dowson Highlands, beautiful residential districts, there was heavy bombing. One woman was killed in Dowson Highlands. The governor has proclaimed a state of emergency. Traffic is almost at a standstill in parts of the city. However, the traffic to and from Waikiki seems to be normal. When planes, uh, Japanese planes, appeared over Waikiki, there were many people out in the streets and watched the uh, bombing there. One man at Waikiki was badly injured when a bomb dropped uh, in the heart of that uh, beach resort. The Japanese planes seem to have come over the city uh, and the environs with no intimation whatsoever that these were Japanese planes. And it was a very, a very difficult uh, uh, for people here to believe that these were Japanese planes. Uh, here's a report that just came from Hickam, from Hickam Field. There were 350 men killed in a direct bomb hit on the barracks at Hickam Field. And at Bellows Field, on the other side of the island, on the windward side of the island, the field was bombed very heavily. That's all the news from Honolulu now. We'll be back with more news at a later time. This is KGU in Honolulu, Hawaii. Back in New York City, we'd like to read now a telegram. It reads and addressed to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the White House, Washington, D.C. All our facilities and personnel are ready and at your instant service. We await your command. It's signed, David Sarnoff, President, Radio Corporation of America, and Chairman of the Board, National Broadcasting Company. And here is a message for NBC Associated Stations. The National Broadcasting Company newsroom in the audience, New York, Hollywood, San Francisco, and Washington, will remain on a 24-hour basis throughout this emergency. If news warrants, NBC will broadcast throughout tonight. And now for another special broadcast, we take you to Washington. Tonight at the White House, President Roosevelt will meet with his cabinet members to determine what course the administration should follow after the Japanese attack on the United States. Beyond doubt, he will ask Congress to make some declarations. What that will be, we do not know. But here in our Washington studios are several congressional leaders who can give us a cross section of the feeling in Congress. They have been sitting at the speaker listening to Upton Post speaking in San Francisco and the commentator from Honolulu. They are the Senator from Utah, Senator Albert G. Thomas, Senator Walter F. George, Georgia, and Representative Luther A. Johnson of Texas. First voice that you will hear will be that of Senator Albert D. Thomas of Utah. Senator Thomas, just how would Congress go about declaring war on Japan if the President decides that a formal declaration should be made? for a statement about the condition that would have to be that war has actually started. 
was an attack upon Hawaii. It was an attack upon the incorporated part of the United States, and it's definitely an invasion. I passed the key, therefore, to repel an invasion. That means that the declaration of war would not be initiated by us, but a statement by Congress would be a result of the action already taken by Japan. Well, Senator, do you think it would be a joint resolution? It would be a resolution by the whole of Congress. Yes, on the recommendation of the President. Senator Walter F. Uh, George of Georgia, uh, we would like to post this question to you. Is there any doubt that Congress would pass a declaration in view of Japan's attack? Assuming that the attack is by the Japanese government and all of the evidence makes an attack by mere factions of the army or navy inconsistent with the facts so far reported, there would, in my opinion, be no doubt of a speedy recognition of a state of war, which, in legal effect, would amount to a straight declaration of war by the United States against Japan. Well, Senator, in view of the uh, comments you've heard the broadcast and those that you have received in your office, no doubt, uh, what is your opinion, your statement, uh, if you would like to make one, of the situation that exists and what little we know about it? It is unbelievable that Japan would have made an unprovoked attack, but all of this evidence is consistent with that fact at the very moment when uh, the State Department and the President were undertaking to continue a state of peace with Japan. The attack was made. Uh, the developments of the last three or four weeks, particularly, indicate that this movement by Japan is, has the authority of the Japanese government back of it. It's only that to be true, although it's an unbelievable, un unbelievable development in our international affairs. The United States does not hesitate to accept the state of war created by Japan and enter vigorously in its prosecution. Uh, Representative Luther A. Johnson of Texas is in the group and the only representative of the House at the gathering here on microphone. Uh, Senator, Representative Johnson, uh, are these your views that you have uh, opinions on the situation? I think that Senator Thomas and Senator George are very clearly and accurately stated the views of a nation as a whole. And I think that Congress would undoubtedly carry into effect their statements that made the reference to the state of war. And I think that Japan's attitude and this uh, beginning of uh, this war is characteristic of Japan's method of waging war in recent years. The invasion of Manchuria and the invasion of these other countries have all been without warning. And in doing that, they not only follow their technique of war, but they also are consistent with the lead to which they belong or which that all Hitler is ahead. The American people, I would say, are united and after the long, tolerant, patient efforts made by President Wilson and F.A. Hall to avert war, I think that if Japan now brings on this war, it will find the United States united and unified as never before. Well, Senator Johnson and Senators, may we interrupt our little uh, discussion in the round table. I'm here to return to the Epic Museum in New York for just a moment. Now, the NBC has a special message. The Secretary of War directs that all firms and manufacturing plants that have defense contracts or who are working on defense forces will at once institute proper measures against sabotage. We can keep that message again from the NBC, a special message. The Secretary of War directs that all firms and manufacturing plants that have defense contracts or who are working on defense forces will at once institute proper measures against sabotage. 
another bullet now for all Army men in the New York area. The Second Corps Army Area Headquarters here in New York has revoked all leads and furloughs and ordered all men to report to their posts immediately. Again, New York. News of the Japanese attack on outlying U.S. possessions caused crowds to gather in Times Square today, and at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, the crowd was rapidly increasing. In newsreel theaters, programs were uninterrupted. Arachés in the Japanese consulate on Fifth Avenue worked feverishly, filing records into suitcases and began carting them away. A smell of burning paper indicated that some records had been destroyed. Washington. President Roosevelt, in his message yesterday to Emperor Hiroshito or Hirohito of Japan, mainly attempting to avert a Far Eastern conflict, assured the Nipponese government that the United States had no intention of invading Indochina and expressed the view that America could obtain pledges from the Dutch East Indies, Malaya, Thailand, and China, and that no such attack would be made if Japanese troops were withdrawn from that area. This news has come to you from the NBC Newsroom in New York, and this is the National Broadcasting Company. We're remembering Pearl Harbor today on our Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day programming. Brought to you by Old Time Radio USA and the WOTR Radio Network.